Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, very, very distinguished friends of the NEDA, because men must essentially pay homage to God the Creator, I am craving your indulgence at this point in time to ask everyone to rise and join me in praying from the Holy Scriptures, Psalm Thanksgiving, Psalm 170. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise the Lord, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Thank you. Today, is the red letter day for Grenada. For indeed, in the entire history of our country, there has been no event, neither could there be in the future, any event to parallel the importance, to parallel the significance of uh, this morning's event. And I feel especially deep and a profound sense of gratification in the privilege and the honor bestowed upon me this morning in receiving these veritable documents signed and sealed and uh, delivered for and on behalf of the people of Grenada, Carriaco, and Pity Martini. I feel a sense of gratification indeed, having been appointed by the great supreme architect of the universe to be the one upon whose shoulders the responsibilities contained in these documents must in great measures rest. This morning we have with us So many distinguished friends, and I call you friends with the deepest sense of seriousness and meaningfulness. We are very happy that you've come 
to witness this historic event. And I know that lots of you have come, ladies and gentlemen, not without some concern in coming. Because for some reason or the other, my country has been receiving some of the most vicious attacks by the various communication media. But I am glad that you have made it possible to come and to see for yourselves and to enjoy for yourselves the warmth of friendship of the people of this country. What has happened here this morning has made me feel confident to face the future with fortitude, with strength, and with hopefulness. The measure taken by the British government and Her Majesty the Queen have brought to us great joy and happiness. And I take pleasure in recording grateful thankfulness to Her Majesty for giving or assent to the necessary bills, and indeed to the members of Parliament, both in the House of Representatives, the House of Commons, and in the House of Lords. The enemies of progress of this country have worked hard, assiduously hard. The voice of the large but silent majority has spoken. Grenada is now facing a new era. My people have been aroused to... Just one minute, Mr. Just one second, Mr. P Neil. The Honorable Prime Minister may continue. Grenada has been aroused to a sense of responsibility. And both government and people have decided, have pledged unreservedly, unflinchingly to accept the challenge to accept the task that lies before us. Certainly, as all can see, the circumstances under which we have emerged 
the circumstances under which we have attained, the circumstances under which we have conquered, have been stringently loaded uh, against us. We therefore need your friendship. And I am particularly pleased to note that the British Commonwealth of Nations have accepted the application of Grenada to join the Commonwealth. And I understand uh, that our application was unanimously accepted. It is also very gratifying indeed to have received from prime ministers and presidents personal messages to me as the head of government coming uh, from various heads. I am thrilled by the message delivered here this morning and coming from the Prime Minister of Great Britain. Personal messages have come to me bearing the signature of Presidents and Prime Ministers, perhaps too many to mention here this morning. And I don't know that I can tax my brain to remember them all. But I was thrilled also when I received a message coming from the President of the United States, Mr. Nixon. Message coming from the Prime Minister of India, Mrs. Gandhi. A message coming from Prime Minister of Canada, Mr. Trudeau. A personal message coming from the President of Venezuela. Dr. Caldero. It means that Grenada is certainly befriended by nations and peoples large and small. I would consider myself failing in duty if I did not add some modicum of quota to what the leader of the House and the leader of the Senate have already expressed in terms of congratulation to His Excellency the Governor. And my quota must include the fact that I happen to know that His Excellency the Governor General has been awarded by Her Majesty the Queen the knighthood of the KCM.
This, I understand, would be gazetted tomorrow in London. And so, Sir Leo de Gale, Governor General of Grenada, my heartiest congratulations. Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, I don't intend to give any lengthy address here this morning, but I must say for my visitors, my friends particularly, that in spite of the fact that there has been some measure of unrest in our country, the government and the people that we represent are smiling. We are happy people. We are happy because we recognize God's endowment to us. We recognize the natural beauty, the picturesqueness, the scenic beauty of our country. And sometimes we attempted to feel that this is the part referred to in the Holy Writ as the Garden of Eden. We are smiling also, not because we have in hand much in material, much in natural resources, but also because we know that your friendship would be meaningful. Man is afraid to unlock the door of himself. Man is the greatest thing that God has created in this earth plane. And once we put our hearts and heads and hands together and invoke the assistance of the great almighty God, nothing uh, is impossible. It might be fitting at this moment, to read again, Mr. Speaker, Mr. President, perhaps for the sake of the record, and perhaps to emphasize the need for all to take heed part of what I said earlier today in the occasion of the flag-raising ceremony. And now I pray your indulgence. I said, among other things, earlier today, immeasurable damage has been done to our dear land and people by the enemies of progress. Peaceful, loyal citizens and residents have been made to face great inconveniences. The enemies of progress have done more damage to Grenada than Hurricane Janet. The tourist industry has been virtually crippled. Hotel owners, hotel workers, Taxi drivers, vendors, farmers, nutmeg producers have all suffered considerably. <coughs>
Trade unions have called illegal strikes. Businessmen and women have defied the laws of the land. Several of the people have committed breaches of the law. However, now should not be the time for recriminations and reprisals. But rather, now is the time for goodwill. Now is the time for unity. Now is the time for reconstruction. And so I now appeal to all Grenada in its totality to join her heads, hearts and hands in unity to repair the damage done and to build a Grenada for ourselves and for posterity. I invite all opposition factions to let me hear from them as soon as possible regarding the reaction to my appeal. God bless you. On behalf of government and the people, it is with the deepest feeling and the thankfulness with which I, on their behalf and on my behalf, have had the great pleasure and honor of accepting, receiving uh, the instruments.